And joining me right now is Mr. Alfred Weber. How are you, sir? You know, I'm so happy to be on your show again. And because also, uh, not only are you a, a tremendously intuitive and ascending host, <clears throat> but at this time, uh, today is uh, November 27th, and we're approaching 2024. And as we were discussing, uh, my entire enterprise is into a fresh start for 2024, turning over a new leaf, and our omniversity is uh, going to be uh, opening itself up in 2024 with new courses and uh, really moving into its role because our omniversity is chartered to share the knowledge of our multidimensional reality and sciences. And all of this has grown out of our, our first book on the Omniverse, our 2014 book, which along with another colleague, he and I both published books in 2014 in different parts of the planet, documenting the existence of the Omniverse. You've got Universe, Multiverse, Omniverse, and the Sumerian astronomers documented the Universe at about 3400 BC, which is a uh, an organic singularity of time, energy, space, and matter. And that's what founded what we would call the, the current scientific uh, method, quoted of quote. And that's what they te teach at universities. Universities are for studying the universe. And then in 1895, the American uh, <coughs> scientist William James coined the term multiverse. And uh, <clears throat> the definition of the multiverse is the sum of all universes. Well, as we showed in our first, in our 2014 book on the omniverse, there are two Stanford scientists who uh, have made an estimate of the number of universes in the multiverse. It's not infinite, uh, but it's the number is so humongous that we don't even have a name for it. It's 10 uh, to the seventh to the seventh. And that number, if we were to write it out in uh, longhand or 12 point type would be more than 260 million miles long. And we don't have a name for it. But that's how many universes these scientists have estimated wow. are in our multiverse. That's a lot of universes. Yeah, yeah. And we're only in one of those universes now. And so in 2014, uh, myself and one other colleague and a whole movement of people who have been studying the Omniverse, which is the next iteration after the multiverse, and the Omniverse equation, which we set out in our 2014 book, and our two books after that book on the omniverse uh, is, is omniverse it's sort of like the e equals mc squared of the omniverse right einstein's equation um <clears throat> the the omniverse equation is omniverse equals multiverse in other words the sum of all of the universes 10 to the 7 to the 7th plus the spiritual dimensions and <clears throat> the definition of the spiritual dimensions is quote end of quote the intelligent civilization of souls plus the spiritual entities plus source or what's commonly called god now the difference uh between the spiritual dimensions in the omniverse and the spiritual dimensions in conventional, quote, religions on earth, end of quote, is that in religions, those are traditionally matters of faith. You know, the Roman Catholics over the 2000 years have held inquisition after inquisition, where they would burn you at the stake unless you believed the Nicene Creed, you know, do you believe that's that right. you didn't, they'd burn you alive. 
I um, almost I like uh, yeah, almost like today, almost. Yeah, I mean, oh, burn your life too. We were uh, my my spouse and I spoke at the 2019 uh, UFO Congress in Barcelona, Spain, ah. and they put us up in this hotel in downtown in the old Barcelona, and right across from this alley. Our hotel window opened up to the Church of the Inquisition. Oh, interesting. <laughs> this is where the Inquisition was <laughs> held in Barcelona. It's kind of mind-boggling to be there, right? Sure is, yeah. But in the omniverse equation, the spiritual dimensions, and we go into this at length in our book, um, it's called The Dimensional Ecology of the Omniverse, that, that 2014 book. Um, and and what it means is uh, the scientific study of the afterlife, the scientific study of the intelligent civilization of souls, the scientific study of intelligent beings in the afterlife dimension, the scientific study of a source or God, and the scientific study means using the same scientific method that, uh, you know, the the universities that use, that were founded by the Sumerian astrologers to study the universes, in other words, uh, uniform protocols and replicable results. All, all you people who went to, you know, high school chemistry or went to first year freshman chemistry or physics and went into the lab in freshman chemistry, they said, okay, you want to prove an experiment? You have to have, uh, uh, you know, standard protocols and replicable results. And that's how you prove it in, in, in the scientific method. Well, we carry that over in, in the science of the omniverse and we prove the existence of the soul and the science of the soul and the soul regularities using uh, uh, standard protocols, scientific protocols, and replicable results. We don't rely on faith and prayer, even though it's good, you know, it's sure. good telepathic com communication with the afterlife and souls in the afterlife. And there are places. Uh, through um, uh, that you can actually go to websites on the internet and you can communicate with souls in the afterlife who are now online. Uh, and the same thing with spiritual beings. Uh, you can uh, follow through and the same thing with source that we, we now have. And that's all set out in my three books on the omniverse. That that you can get in multiple places in either ebook or or uh, a paperback. Uh, you can either go to Amazon and just Google my name and you'll get them. I've got 13 books on on uh, Amazon now, or you right. can go to universebooks.com for the pay for the ebooks. I mean, it's all there. It's all there. But, and Alfred, I hate to interrupt you and. Yeah. You know, th this is actually one of the first times I've I've actually seen you on camera in uh, real oh, time, and I'm like, Alfred, you you look great. Oh well, thanks, thanks. Well, you know, I I uh, I hate to say it, but I'm I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> uh, Patty Greer, who's a longtime friend of mine, she's oh, yeah. a, an ardent student of crop circles, right? And she also became the CEO, the chief executive officer of something that was named after my good buddy, the late Buckminster Fuller. And Bucky Fuller and I and Barbara Marks Hubbard, uh, in, in memoriam also, the future's Barbara Marks Hubbard, uh, at the University of Cincinnati back in the 1970s, founded the World Good News Network, okay? Mm -hmm. And the whole proposition is that the current me media their paradigm for sales is to promote bad news. You know, war, sure. disease, crime, and poverty sell. The best right? stuff, yes. Yeah, so that, <laughs> that's what they do. But then Bucky and Barbara and myself founded the World Good News Network. So I broadcast on the World Good News Network, and I 
I'm happy to be sharing the World Good News Network with you. Well, absolutely, Mr. Fuller, also in 1996, there was a discovery of, uh, of the uh, <clears throat> carbon-60 molecule called a fullerene. And uh, 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 Patty Greer's company, two eminent scientists down in Texas, Chris Burroughs and his colleague, uh, developed it for safe human consumption. And they have one laboratory test, uh, the Paris study with replicable results, where they, uh, <clears throat> they um, increased the lifespan of mammals by 90%. Really? Yeah. Wow. And so I started taking this stuff, carbon-60. Oh, wow. For it's you can find it at 6c60evo.com yeah, yeah i mean you look great alfred i mean i yeah, i hate I, to say it but my god look at you i i turned 81 this year damn that's crazy like 81 years young alfred this is the stuff oh my god the, the lifespan you don't look yeah you don't look 80 at all by the way yeah, uh, no. wow and, and so if 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 people want it just come to my website uh, exopolitics.com and I will have a link there for you where you can buy the C60 Evo and you'll get all kinds of discounts. You'll get up to 30% off, okay? Because I, I'm an affiliate of the company. Okay, sure. And I'm doing it because Bucky Fuller and I mm -hmm. uh, started the World Good News Network and my good friend and colleague, uh, the time traveler, he was a time traveler for the U.S. government. Andrew, you mean? A Andy Bashago. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, a Andy Bashago used to meet with Bucky Fuller. And when Andy met with Booker, uh, with Bucky before Andy yeah. and I met, and while Bucky was still alive, he said, did you meet with Alfred Weber and talk about the World Good News Network? So all this stuff has been going on for decades. Isn't that amazing? That is pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and so uh, we, it's been sort of a given that the new world starts on planet Earth in 2024. We 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 have been at the effect of sort of the reptilian agenda of war, disease, crime, and poverty. You know. Sure. Uh, and that in 2024 is where the sort of the planetary ascension really kicks in and both at the individual level, but at the collective level. And so people can go to our website, exopolitics.com. And that's been around for a long time. Oh, yeah. Uh, we we uh, launched it in the year 2000 along with our book, Exopolitics, that have helped find the, found the science of exopolitics. And Andy Bashago can, can tell you this, but the secret CIA time tower program uh, went, went forward in time and time traveled my book, uh, Exopolitics. I think I, I got a copy. You have a copy somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I've got a copy right here. He's and, uh, reaching they, for a book, by the way, for those they, that are only listening. They, they time traveled there it this is. book from 2005 when it was a saw appeared in paperback back to 1971. Wow. I, I had a copy of that book, by the way, but now it's lost. Oh, well, I, I, I'll be glad to. St I, I'm going to uh, send you. You got an autograph one for a, me. A. a I'm going to send you a review copy. Oh, please do. <laughs> and this book was secretly time traveled by the CIA from 2005 when it first appeared as a paperback. It first appeared in ebook form in the year 2000 and was time traveled back to 1971. And in 1971, Andy Bashago testified that he was shown it, uh, it, it, his father was his sort of handler and partner in the CIA time travel program, 
and he was at the La Hacienda restaurant one day in New Mexico between jumps, and they brought out a satchel of stuff from the future, and out popped Alfred Lamont Weber's book, Exopolitics, that had been brought from the future back to 1971 by the DARPA CIA time travel program. And in 1971, I was general counsel and assistant administrator of the Environmental Protection Administration of the city of New York under Mayor John Lindsay and Administrator Jerome Kretschmer. And in 1971, my, my job there at EPA was to give, among other things, to give public speeches. So one day I got booked and, and uh, people who showed up were very different from the others. There was a man in a suit, looked very official. And he took me, uh, I think, to New Jersey a few hours away, an hour and a half or so. And we went to a nondescript building. And on the second floor, there were about 50 men in suits and suits and ties. It looks like one of those NASA, you know, when, when you have something in space and NASA's there. Right. Uh, shirts and ties and suits. Mm -hmm. And I knew instantly through my double vision that they were government operatives or agents. You know, they had that look. They were, <laughs> I had been brought under false pretenses to, I, I thought I was giving my stump speech on protecting the environment. And they were, that was the CIA DARPA secret time travel unit. They had brought my book back from 2005. It was only 1971. And they wanted to see what I looked like. <laughs> because they, this book founded exopolitics and is filled with decade of contact, alien abduction, banning weapons and warfare in space. You know, and Alfred, when when this actually was presented to you initially, the whole book thing, what, what exactly first came into your mind? Did you think you guys are nuts? Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So explain that. Yeah, explain that to uh, the newer listeners out there who are just going to discover you right now. Actually. Yeah. Well, I I I swear this is what would happen to me. You you have to understand sort of where I come from. See. I'm a lawyer and a judge, right? That's right. We are trained in a certain way. Yeah. So one of my great pride and joys was that back in the 1960s, uh, actually earlier, uh, I started in, uh, uh, I graduated from law school in 1967. And in, in 1968, 69, I was a Fulbright scholar. I got a Fulbright scholar in Montevideo, Uruguay. And I felt so lucky because back then, if I hadn't have gotten that, I, I, I had an extra, well, I was still 25 and not 26. And back then we had to game the system or we would have ended up as grunts uh -huh. in the jungle of the war in Vietnam. That's that was right. Really a genocidal war. So I lucked out and one, you know, I, I even uh, had volunteered for the U.S. Navy uh, Judge uh, Advocate General and the U.S. Navy uh, uh, Officer Candidate School to kind of try to get out of the war. At least I'd be on a boat and I wouldn't be in the jungle shooting Vietnamese people in this amoral war, you know what I'm saying? Even back then you felt that strongly about uh, the Vietnam War. Oh yeah, that was Definitely. The okay. of our generations. I, I used to go down to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. In 1967, we had huge marches on Washington. I remember in, in one of the marches that I went down in 1967, uh, I they they had this chain link fence around right. the U.S. Capitol, so we wouldn't approach. You know, we wouldn't storm the Capitol like, like they did on January 6, twenty twenty one. And I climbed over the, <laughs> the link fence. Yeah. And uh, Mayor Ed Koch was a congressman then, and and he was standing right in back of the link. Oh wow. Personally climbed over the legs, 
And I got in Ed Koch's face and shouted him down. I said, you should be ashamed of yourself for what you're doing in Vietnam. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I said, that, that's what we used to do then. Right, you know? right. Yeah. But then uh, w w what happened is that I became general counsel of the EPA after I came back from Montevideo. And I, I, uh, was, given a, I, I was offered a position at a very large, the largest in international law firm in the world. Uh, and I, you know, I'm yeah. representing, uh, who could turn that down? Yeah. I mean, I did. And I represented the, uh, uh government of Brazil oh, wow. and stuff like that. And, and I, I sat in, uh, uh, former secretary of state, George Ball's office. And the guy who, who hired me was Valor Hamilton, who was, uh, John F president, John F Kennedy first picked to be director of the CIA. But, you know, even though I was at like the apex that, you know, the best blue chip Wall Street law firm, best international law firm, we had offices in London, Paris, all over the world. I just couldn't do that. I had to get out and fight for our generation. So uh, Mayor John Lindsay was sort of the progressive leader at the time. And I went to a luncheon where his environmental, the, uh, uh, the administrator of the New York City EPA spoke, Jerome Kretschmer, and he said, we're looking for crusading environmental lawyers. And we just brought in uh, Neil Fabricant, formerly of the New York City uh, <coughs> Civil Liberties Union, uh, to bring in crusading environmental lawyers. So I said, hey, that's me. I applied there and I had, one of the things I had done was I had become a member of the New York City uh, uh, Civil Liberties Union. That's, that's the pro bono service that we used to do at, at the law firm. And I became of counsel at the Panther 1969 Panther 21 trial where the FBI set up the Black Panthers in a, in a, a, in a, in a false, they falsely accused them of a plot to blow up the Statue of Liberty. That's right. Was false. Oh, this yes. was 1969. Uh, and I, 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 I went in there and I filed a brief with the court showing that, that, that they couldn't have done it. And I, and I defended an SDS member, Students for a Democratic Society, who had been summary, summarized, who had been sentenced for summary contempt because he stood up in the court, yeah, courthouse, in the courtroom and said, I don't respect this court. See, at that time, the Chicago 7 trial was going on with Abby Hoffman and everybody. And every, every, everybody was standing up and confronting the judges. See what I'm saying? Because uh, Lyndon Johnson had, had been part of the Kennedy assassination and had thrown us into a genocidal war. So my brief uh, got the SDS member off, and then it was circulated nationwide and including to the Chicago 7 trial. So I, I've always done stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so that's kind of my kind of my background, and and that's uh, pretty. It's pretty astonishing what you've accomplished, Alfred. You know, I commend yeah. you for uh, this long history you have, and yeah, again, you come yeah, from a very yeah, professional, yeah. very professional background, Alfred. Yeah, and, and so I've been a judge on three tribunals of conscience which is like a tribunal of conscience, what, what like Lord Russell, Bertrand Russell did during the Vietnam War out of London, where you have the world's uh, civic courts sit on their hands and they let these atrocities go forward, right? That are violations of fundamental law. Well, a tribunal of conscience is where people from of conscience come together in a tribunal, like 20 or 30 judges over four continents. And I've been a, a member of three tribunals of conscience. One, 
uh, the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal, where we tried Tony Blair and uh, George W. Bush, Richard B. Cheney, and, and their cabinet for war crimes in Iraq and Afghanistan, Afghanistan and Guantanamo, Cuba. And uh, we convicted them of war crimes. And right. Tony Blair had to flee from South Africa because when he took a trip to South Africa, Archbishop Tutu went to the uh, to the state prosecutors there, and, and they were going to prosecute Tony Blair based on our judgment. And the same thing happened when President George W. Bush tried to do a greenwash trip through uh, East Africa. The East African countries took our judgment from Kuala Lumpur and were going to arrest George W. Bush. And you'll notice that George W. Bush does not leave the U.S. now. It's because of yeah, our judgment. That's right. He, he doesn't leave yeah. the U.S. Yeah. And the second tribunal of conscience that I've been a judge on is the 9-11 War Crimes Tribunal. Ah. We've shown that September 11, 2001 was a false flag of the U.S. government. In fact, Andy Bashago filed an affidavit there showing that he was shown moving in images of September 11th, 2001, back in 1971. Really? Yeah. The, the CIA pre-identified it uh, through time travel, through chronovision, and they gave it over to the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, and they're the ones that did the false flag, and they had 30 years to plan it. I'm going to have to bring that up, by the way, when I interview them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll I definitely mean, mention that. And by the way, Alfred, for the record, that's actually how I discovered you, actually, was through uh, all the 9-11 stuff you were doing years okay. back. Yeah, yeah. And and Andy's, Andy's affidavit, which you can ask him about, was the cornerstone of the 9-11 war crimes tribunal because it showed that the U.S. government had working knowledge of 9-11 30 years prior to the event through its secret time travel program, which they used for forward, forward planning of that false flag operation. Was it remote and viewed, they, Alfred? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, my. I, out of that grew my book, The Chronogarchy. That's a, um, a, a word that means those who rule through time, chronos and archy. And, and when I show in my book, The Chronogarchy, right that the Earth's public affairs are ruled through or are governed through secret time travel government that we have that is always monitoring events and then they set up events like, you know, the whole false flag war that's going on of Israel. I was and, just about to ask you that, Alfred, yeah, what, what that, your thoughts and opinions are, what happened out there? Um, uh, oh, well, out in well, Israel and Gaza, the whole F, the whole okay, festival. Yeah, um, look, let uh, us let us know. Ju ju just to make a, a long story short, all U.S. presidents, George H. W. Bush, um, uh, uh, Clinton, Obama, Obama, George W. Bush, Trump, Don Legs, Rums, uh, 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 Donald Trump, and um, uh, Biden uh, uh, were pre-identified by the secret DARPA CIA time travel program in 1971. They were all secretly briefed in 1971. U.S. chrononaut Andrew D. Bashago was president at many of those briefings in the La Hacienda restaurant in Santa Fe, New Mexico. They were all briefed as to their future presidency. So U.S. presidential elections are a farce, okay? So, and Trump, Donald Trump, since 1971, has known that he's going to be a future president. And so all, all of these are farces, and Trump knows exactly what he's doing. And so it's when, when Andy ran for president in 2016, he ran on a platform to expose all of this, his, his under proposals. And that's why the CIA and the secret government blinded him. He's now 
legally blind because he ran on a platform to expose this. And I was in Hawaii, in Kona, Hawaii, presenting at a conference there where Andy called me and he said, Alfred, I've just been threatened by someone from the uh, sitting, the office of the sitting president, George H. George W. Bush, because they said that they can't guarantee my safety if I continue to whistleblow the fact that all these presidents were pre-identified, oh groomed in 1971. So that's the truth of what's going on. And I just have a new book, uh, which uh, the paperback was just approved by um, by uh, Amazon this past week, and it's called uh, the the United States in in the future. Uh, will the United States of America break up into many regions of public inquiry? And the background of that interesting is that in 1977, January 1977, I was offered an, a, a position at a futurist at Stanford Research Institute Futures Unit. And I joined them in 1977. And on my first day there, Willis Harmon, who was the director of the Futures Unit, they had a, a contract for the Central Intelligence Agency to, for a study of a 50 years future of the United States. And he drew me aside and said, Alfred, in the future, the United States is going to break up into many regions. Well, what I realize now, and this is all in the book, is that he was giving me a leak from the CIA quantum access time travel program that in the future, the United States is going to break up into many regions. And my new book goes uh, very deeply uh, into this because it shows that if Donald Trump becomes president POTUS in 2024, it is more probable than not that Donald John Trump will be the proximate cause of the breakup of the United States oh, into many regions. That's pretty you heavy. You have right now, there is a bill at the Texas state legislature for Texas to secede from the union. Right now, uh, there are public opinion polls in Trump leading states. They call them red states versus blue states. Sure. Leading states. The public opinion polls, the uh, Trump supporters uh, lead. 33% saying that they prefer for their states to secede and become independent countries because they believe that, 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 they, uh, that their state is going to be better off as an independent country than as part of the U.S. Now, let me say this, and uh, as a judge, we serve this on uh, Major General Paul Vallely, U.S. Army, retired, who was the co-author of a book, very important book, a co-author <coughs> with uh, Colonel Michael Aquino, U.S. Army, the former head. Who's been here on this program, by the way. Sorry? I said I've interviewed him uh, multiple times on the show. Well, Colonel... Uh, General Paul Vallely is a co-author, and all of this is documented on the book, and I'm very happy to send you a review copy oh, of yeah. the book. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to, yeah. At, right after this program. I'm Aquino knew of a lot of things, by the way. Sorry? I said Aquino knew of a lot of things, by the way. Oh, yeah. But now, uh, 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 Michael Aquino was the head of the Temple of Satan. That's and right. If you go to the Temple of Satan, MAGA, M-A-G-A, which was the motto 
that Trump has chosen for his 2016 and 2020 and 2024 U.S. presidential, presidential campaign, and which he's put on his forehead and the foreheads of many millions of Americans who are MAGA supporters, MAGA, M-A-G-A, is the fifth and highest priest status in the temple of Satan. Oh my, I didn't know that. And, yeah, it's I know. It's pretty wild. And, 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 and I'm going to send the book to you. Oh yes, please so do. you can see that. And I'm going to put this in your chat so you can read that. Oh yeah. Uh, article right, right now as we're as we're speaking so you can see what what we're talking about there there's a double game go, going on here uh with maga maga at the at the non-initiate level means make america great again but maga is the fifth and highest level of priesthood in the temple of satan that michael aquino knew about and that Paul Vallely, who has 300 generals in his, uh, in his organization, that is one of the main supporters of QAnon and one of the main supporters of Trump. They are the military for Trump, and they are supporting MAGA from the Temple of Satan because Paul Vallely was the sponsor of Michael Aquino in the U.S. Army. And that's how Michael Aquino advanced so much in the U.S. Army and got as far as he did. And we show that in my book that was just approved this past week. Okay? Oh, my goodness. Yes, I, I definitely want to read that book for sure. And yeah, um, yeah. as I talked to Michael many times on the program, he comes across as someone very professional someone very thought out very care very careful of what he puts out there no doubt he seemed to be choosing his words very wisely on this program and very smooth and very um cunning oh yeah and and, and this is what they've done to the u.s they have put the fifth the the highest of five levels of priesthood of the temple of satan they have put that on the foreheads of all trump supporters MAGA, and, and and that's what trump is pushing and that is the secret power of satan that's behind him and if you go to my book i have another book called tracking the antichrists which is all avail also available if you just go to Amazon and Google my name, it'll come right up on my Amazon page. I had seen that. And by the way, I didn't, I didn't want to really ask you about that. I had no idea if we were even going to come across that. But yeah, I did see that you wrote something about the Antichrist. And yeah. are, are we going to see the Antichrist in our lifetimes, Alfred? Uh, yeah. In fact, let, let me just get that, 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 that particular book. And, and put that particular link sure uh, in 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 the chat because I I have a uh, uh, I have a that that link goes to a a a particular uh, hot hypothesis this is an evidence-based link and I just put it in your in your chat what that book does is it takes chapter 13 of the book of revelations and i know that for example my colleague and probably yours tim cohen has written the book an antichrist the, the antichrist and a cup of tea in which he exhaustively uh goes to point out that king charles iii formerly prince charles is the biblical antichrist of chapter 13. We go a step a, a step further, and we go into uh, chapter 13. Chapter 13, the book of Revelation says, this is uh, uh, verses 16 to 18, and he causes all, both 
small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he, he that had the mark in the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six, three score and six. That's the famous 666. Right. Okay. So in just one short sentence, let me bring you the, the thesis of this book. And I urge everyone to read it because it's today's headlines. Tracking the Antichrist shows that the prophesied planetary Antichrist will manifest immediately prior to the prophesied second coming of Jesus, the human manifestation of the creator God of our local universe. As with Alfred's groundbreaking 2022 book, A Revelation on the Life and Teachings of Jesus, that's another book that we can talk about immediately after this one. His new book, Tracking the Antichrist, shows that Earth has not yet reached the golden age at age time of the coming of Christ. Hence, none of the named Antichrist world figures in our postmodern age are the prophesied Antichrist. They are wannabe Antichrist, wannabe Antichrist. And so in this book, I have a chapter for each of the wannabe Antichrist showing how they fulfill chapter 13, but they're not the real Antichrist. They're a wannabes. Mm. And let me just read out the, the, the eight chapters of the book, okay? The chronogarchy deep state is a wannabe Antichrist. Sentient AI artificial intelligence is a wannabe Antichrist. Mohammed bin Salman, MBS of Saudi Arabia, is a wannabe Antichrist. Remember that? Nostradamus talks about MBS in his prophecies. Right, right. That's, that's Mohammed bin Salman. Donald Trump is a wannabe Antichrist. There, he, his, he, his chapter uh, contains 45 reasons why Donald Trump is the Antichrist. You know, and that comes from Brother John. The Rothschilds are the Antichrist. And there's huge reasons there why the Rothschilds or the Antichrist. The Pope, we now have the Jesuit Pope, right? And the church, the Pope and the church are the Antichrist and, you know, the whore of Babylon, right? It's That's the right. Antichrist and the whore of Babylon. Prince William, I once did a long interview with, uh, 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 you know, person who says that he is like a genius her, hermeneuticist, um, uh, Peter Klink, and he's written a couple of books on it, and he holds that Prince William is the actual Antichrist, not, not his father, Prince Charles. I haven't heard of the name, I haven't heard the name Peter so, Kling in a, in a long time. Yeah. Is he okay, he by the way? Now, uh, yeah, he's fine. He, he calls me from time to time. Okay, okay. Just making sure. Uh, Peter went off the grid right. and is in now at an off the grid kind of uh, location. He has a Christian community there and gives, uh, and gives um, sort of rescue and, and uh, shelter to Christians who arrive there. Oh, okay. that's good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the next one to be the Antichrist is Vladimir Putin. And there's a great reading, reading by uh, Dr. Courtney Brown of the Farsight Institute. This is a, um, they do all, all, all of the remote viewing. And Dr. Courtney Brown, uh, this is right after the start of the quote, Ukraine war when yes. that's still going. They did a remote viewing and and we uh, published the transcript of that remote viewing in Vladimir Putin's chapter. 
you know, in this book. Yeah. Wow. And in that chapter in in the remote viewing, they show Vladimir Putin, his aura in in 4D is surrounded by Draco reptilians that are completely maneuvering and manipulating him so that Vladimir Putin is not in charge of his own actions. He is controlled by 4D Draco reptilians that are the ones that caused the, Ukraine, the war in the Ukraine and are the ones that are carrying out a war disease, crime and poverty um, a policy because Vladimir Putin is manipulated by 4D um, reptilians that were exposed by a remote viewing session by uh, Dr. Courtney Brown and his team at the Farsight Institute which I thought was pretty far out, right? That's right. And remote viewing actually has sort of come back on the surface thanks to um, whistleblowers uh, as such. And, you know, they're making, a, they're making the rounds on all kinds of popular talk shows and they're bringing up remote viewing a lot. And uh, at one time, you know, our government really sort of shot down the whole idea of remote viewing. They sort of uh, were putting out that message that, no, it doesn't really work. So we kind of gave it up. But uh, because yeah, I mean, they they claim that they they stopped and it, it, the results were uh, you know it, it didn't it didn't really work. But that's not the truth, though. I mean, these sort of things just sort of evolve and they don't really make them public. There's all these um, projects that um, that go on that are not on record. They are above um, classified. They're above top secret, in other words. Right, because the black budget of the United States government includes a lot of remote viewers. That's right. Who were the uh, colleagues of Dr. Courtney Brown and Dr. Courtney Brown broke with the black budget and became a whistleblower. So the black budget of the U.S. government put out the false news, put out the disinformation that remote viewing doesn't work because they don't want people to get into it and know the truth that the United States is actually a reptilian state. Yes, and uh, you know, at first I, many years ago, I, I, I should um, rewind here and say, you know, I didn't really would, I really wouldn't put too much um, weight behind some of these projects. But then later on, I, I sort of went back in time and pieced things together and everything sort of, really made a lot of sense and now the way the world's uh, sort of turning right now history seems to be repeating itself alfred in real time and i'm sure i'm sure you already had a good suspicion of what's to come long ago well, yeah the, here I, i'm just going to continue just 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 with a few any any christ wannabes that yeah, are go ahead covered? okay after Vladimir Putin, we've got King Charles III, which we spoke about, who our, co our mutual colleague Tim Cohen has identified. He says in his book, The Antichrist and the Cup of Tea, that the, the, the uh, <clears throat> chapter 13, Book of Revelation, uh, <clears throat> Antichrist is King Charles III. And I say, look, uh, no, you've got eight or so Antichrists because... Uh, Right now, the Christ came. See, we're in a dual sun solar system here. Most solar systems in our universe have two suns. Multiple suns, right. Yeah, and, and uh, Jesus Christ came at the height of the Kali Yuga, which is where when the two suns are 12,500 years apart, they're at opposite polar points. And that's when evil is highest in the solar system. Right now, we're about 2,000 uh, years away from that. So if the solar system were a clock, we're at about 20 minutes of, mi of, of midnight. Oh, my. Or, or high, high noon, which is the golden age. Or we're, we're, 
we're in the prema yoga, you, you know, in in the prema yuga, after the kali yuga. Uh, so we still have about ten thousand years before the golden age ha happens. But uh, among the, you know, and that'll be the second coming, I believe, and I base that, and I that is treated in this book, and I base that on inner earth teachings, you know, that come from Agartha that are very advanced, that were released to advanced Vedic teachings, teachers, that that knowledge will come uh, at the golden age in about 10,000 years is when the Christ will return. But uh, so after King Charles, the next uh, uh, wannabe antichrist is the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. Okay, we all know <laughs> that Mao Zedong was a, an intern of Yale in China. I'm I'm an old Yale, you know. I went to Yale and, and to Yale Law School. But you weren't in the Skull and Bones uh, fraternity, oh, no, no, okay? No. Just I, making sure. I was not in, in Skull and Bones. <laughs> uh, I was in an underground uh -huh. called Torch and Talon. We were not Luciferic. We, we were not Luciferic. In fact, we met at a beach house, uh, in, you know, off of the beach there, and we kind of told our, our life story. And the night that I got to tell my life story, we had a gate crasher from Skull and Bones that came to give me a bad time. Oh, no. Yeah. There and, they are again. Yeah. And no, no, Skull and Bones, its official story is that it was founded in, in 1832 as an offshoot of a German secret society. The real story is that Skull and Bones was founded <clears throat> in 1776 as the second chapter of the Bavarian Illuminati headed up by the Rothschilds, and it was founded in 1776 in order to penetrate the American Revolution and make it Luciferian. In fact, there's a lot of lore that George Washington was Luciferian and, in fact, was a Rothschild. So I'm just kind of putting that kind of stuff out. Oh, to yeah investigated further oh yeah a lot of people don't realize that a lot of the a lot of our world leaders uh, here in america i should say they all went to yale yeah be, because i mean george uh, george hw bush and george w bush were both skull and bones that's the second chapter of the bavarian illuminati headed up by the rothschilds john Kerry. That is, yeah that is luciferian now Getting back to the Chinese Communist Party, that was founded by Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong was a uh, was an intern at Yale in China. That mm. was a project of Skull and Bones, or the second chapter of the Bavarian Illuminati. So I'm not surprised. The Bavarian it, the Chinese Communist Party is a is a project of the Bavarian Illuminati, and at its annual general meeting a couple of years ago, the Chinese Communist Party formally declared it had title to Earth's moon and to Mars. Damn. And that is why it is said that evil in this universe began on Earth's moon and on Mars because the Chinese Communist Party is making plans now to occupy the moon and Mars. And if the U.S., uh, you know, even though the U.S. has been Luciferic since 1776. That's right. Uh, the Chinese Communist Communist Party now has leapfrogged it in the in the uh, 
in the kind of the Luciferic race is now wanting to occupy the moon and Mars from a Luciferic agenda of occupying the universe. Okay, so I'm just kind of putting that out as a warning to people. My family, uh, my mother told me, God, God, God rest her soul. Yes. Told me that our family was instrumental in founding the Yale Divinity School, you know, because there's a spiritual side of Yale. Yale is a fight of good and evil at Yale as in many things. So right. I come from that end of Yale that was on the spiritual side. My, my father was a class of 38 at Yale. I was a class of 64 and 67 law. So anyway, that's, that, that's kind of... Their deeper history there. Yeah, I don't think you've ever revealed.